today's session we are going to talk about elastic block storage this is the next group of uh, storage services that we are going to look at in amazon if you notice some time back we were looking at uh, object storage that is uh, s3 and we saw a lot of options like cl uh, cloud front we saw options like simple uh, web hosting we saw options like cross-region replication so we are going to see how Elastic Block Store is going to help in AWS what, what you can do with Elastic Block Store and where all the performance of Elastic Block Store is better than AWS S3. So that is a brief about me. Let's go ahead and see where exactly are we sitting in the storage choices. So you might be a little bit familiar with this storage choices by now. We spoke about the first group that is Amazon S3, which is a durable object storage. And we also spoke about Amazon Glacier and the archival storage for infrequently accessed data. And we also saw how to move data from S3 to Glacier using lifecycle policies. So continuing on the same theme, we are going to see Amazon EBS, which is the block store for uh, AWS EC2 and you want anything to do at a block level. You want to do a random rewrite in a file. If you have a file of say 10,000 pages and you want to read a particular page, which is like 5,601, then block store is the best way to uh, store your data and try to do random read writes. That is very, very important for you to understand because you cannot do something like that in Amazon S3 or a Glacier. They don't allow you to read and write a particular bit or a particular uh, few bytes in a file. You have to either change the whole file or you have to upload a new file itself. They're both are same. So if you want to do a random read write operations and you also want to have a, a cap where I mean the capacity to measure your input output operations and then provision exactly how much input and output operations you need then Amazon block store is the option for you and Amazon block store works with EC2 only that is the one thing you should remember that Amazon you cannot use EBS uh, uh, volumes with any I mean you cannot use the block store and attach it to uh, like say for example a database service and start using it so Amazon block store that is EB elastic block store that is EBS works with Amazon EC2 only we will be launching a server attaching a storage and we will be writing and reading data to it we'll be taking snapshots we will be creating images and we will be doing all the other things that typically we do whenever a storage is attached to a server so think of it as a direct attached storage or a sand storage that you are if you are familiar with sand storage concepts but it does a lot more than that we will see what are all the benefits and where it gets better than a typical sand storage so and again another information slide where which is familiar for you and we are looking at the block storage options that we are having here uh, later in the classes we will see how an amazon instance store which is also a block storage is different uh, from ebs so these are all the options that we get and then moving forward block storage so it is although it is very easy to compare an elastic block storage to a sand disk or any other physical hard disk it is a lot more than the hard disk the reason is you, you can have persistent block level data say for example in a typical server especially if it is server is coming with a storage and you want to have measure the performance or improve the performance of the disk it is not straightforward you need you need to call your storage admin and then say that i need this much of input output operations per second and then they go ahead and rework the architecture and ensure that you can read and write that many uh, input output operations per second in other words iops i will be constantly referring to the term iops here because it is uh, uh, one of the critical features of uh, Amazon EBS is IOPS input output operations per second. So when the, one of the important uh, scenarios where EBS is better than uh, ordinary disk or spinning disk or magnetic disk is that 
you can decide how much IOPS you want for your EBS volume by making a few clicks out in the console and then Amazon will ensure that performance is delivered to you. So think of that when compared to an on-premise uh, setup where you need to wait for weeks before your performance of your disks have been increased. And when you have an EBS volume, uh, it, although it is possible in the SanDisk also, EBS allows it even more faster because Amazon's data center is all split into availability zones. So you can take a snapshot, move it across your account by sharing it or taking another snapshot and then you can move it across. You can easily replicate it. So that to, as you can see the last point, the storage store data is automatically replicated within its availability zone. So you, you get a very highly durable storage. You are not going to be impacted by EBS failures. The disk failures are going to be a past tense now. You are not going to have a server outage because the underlying disks have failed or the sand disk is having any performance issues. So some of those uh, simple uh, most common problems with the sand storage is removed when you're talking about elastic block storage. So that is the reason I'm saying it is not equal to a block storage. It is a lot more than a block storage. Think of this scenario here that is uh, being shown in front of you. You have an uh, EC2 instance and let us say this is your EC2 instance and you have connected an EBS storage to this uh, server let us call it as a server and if you uh, since we are not familiar with ec2 so let us call it as a server and you have a storage attached to the server and you make a lot of changes configuration changes and you store all the data into the data uh, into the disk now and after some time you find that you no longer need the server but the data is very important to you so what you can do is in amazon you can just shut down this uh, server completely you can shut it down no problems at all so your cost is coming down and after a few days, let us say after two months, you think that you want to retrieve the data which is inside your EBS volume. So what you do is you create a new instance and attach it again. And attaching a EBS volume to a disk is straightforward. It hardly takes a couple of minutes. And especially if you're mounting it for the second time, that is attaching it for second time, third time, the number of steps comes down even more. You're not going to format the disk. You're not going to uh, uh, do choose the formatting think of the external hard disk that we use with our laptops also for an example I mean EBS is a lot more than that because its performance and availability is all Higher, but think of it as a new external hard disk that you buy the very first time that you want to use uh, If it is a Mac laptop, especially you want to format it for a Mac format it, it won't work out of the box even if it is for a Windows sometimes you need to format it but when you connect it for the next time, you don't do that. You do it only for the first time. Likewise, in EBS also, when you attach the disk for the first time, you are going to format here and then choose a format. It might be NTFS. It might be I'm going to mute everybody if they are not already in mute. Okay. So as I was saying, you are going to format it it, the format might be win, uh, the Windows or a Linux compatible, whichever way you choose it and then you attach it. Once you attach it, you start writing data and once you finish writing data, you detach it and then keep it in your account and it, you just pay for the storage, amount of storage that you are using. And then when you want to use it, then you go ahead and attach it to another server. So this way, your data is persistent outside your server. It is not dependent on your server and you can reattach it anytime. The power of attaching, detaching, writing, formatting, everything is within your hands. You don't have to depend on uh, some remote storage administrator, raise a ticket and wait for him to administer here. So that, that is what it means by saying it is persistent outside of an EC2 instance. The server, uh, the storage is not attached to your server. So your storage can stand outside it and it will be persistent even when the storage goes offline. So it does not necessarily always have to be attached to a server to maintain it. So how do we create an EBS volume? How do we modify an EBS volume? That is what we are going to look at now. Okay, I'm not going to sure that uh, this is video is going, this is a short video that I created. Uh, probably I can show you a demo uh, if it uh, works or 
okay i'm what i'm going to do is i'm going to show a quick demo in the console while this is playing i'm going to alt tab and one more thing guys i'm going to launch a server today to attach the ebs volumes if you're not familiar with launching a storage a server itself uh, uh, don't worry we are going to have a separate class for servers alone it is one of the important classes it is going to be a very big class but for today i'm going to launch a default server configuration and you should be able to follow it straight forward if you're not able to follow just wait for a couple of classes you will we will be seeing how to launch a server but it is very very simple we just click through the consoles to launch a server so that we can attach our disk to that and another question here i have logged into my console and let us go ahead and search for the ebs uh, service ebs doesn't stay alone it doesn't have a console of its own it resides inside your ec2 so let us click on ec2 this is what this is the ec2 dashboard that we are seeing right now and in the ec2 dashboard let me minimize the things that we are not going to look at right now immediately at least i'm just minimizing these options so we can focus our energies on this option alone you can you see here elastic block store volumes and snapshots these are the two options that we are going to look at today we are going to create a new volume so click on volumes and as you can see there is already one volume in my account let me go ahead and create another volume so all you have to do is click on create volume and then it is asking me very very simple questions like what is the type of volume i want to create we will look at this in a short while each of them is nothing but this is a general purpose ssd disk that means my performance is going to be average and when i say provisioned iops that you see here that means that i can tell amazon how much input output operations i wanted for example if i click on this it will ask me what is the iops i will be able to edit it but if i go ahead and uh, choose general purpose ssd it will give me by default its own permission say for example general purpose it is by default it gives me this much of iops it will not be allowing me to edit it and if you want to know more information about what is the iops you click on this i button here it gives you additional information so if you want more performance customized to throughput in other words then you go ahead and choose this and you can see here the max is 20000 iops uh, sometimes uh, some crazy people ask this question in the interviews what is the maximum throughput that you can achieve because this is a theoretical limit that a disk can achieve in ebs store if you want to more storage then you have to provision more storage and each of those disks will have 20000 iops so that way you can achieve more than 20,000 IOPS to your disks. But th that will also require changes in your application. But anyway, let us not get in there. So we saw what is general purpose. We saw what is uh, provisioned IOPS. Then there is something called cold HDD. If you see this option is SSD, this option is HDD. The difference is these are all solid state disks let me repeat that solid state disk that is like the sd cards that we put put in our mobile phones whereas this hdds are magnetic ones spinning disks and when you say cold storage that is having a very uh, standard input output of uh, performance and you will not be able to change that and it is for a cheaper cost amazon allows you to use this storage for a very cheap cost because the read rate operations are not as high as your provision iops systems and then there is a throughput optimized hdd is also available here also this disk is little bit better than the previous option for a little different cost the cost is a different and the throughput is also is better here and then you have finally a very very cheap storage magnetic tapes it is a tape based storage available for you especially if you want to store some long term data and you don't want to use s3 for it but at the same time reduce your cost of it then you use magnetic tapes this way your storage will be uh, very slow but at the same time the cost is coming down as well as the maintenance is also coming down for you because 
um, the cost is lesser the operational expenses are lesser here so for our example and I would recommend you to strongly choose general purpose and choose a disk size which is lesser than 30 GB because uh, 30 GB is the free limit if you want to pay more money to Amazon by experimenting with a higher size you can go ahead and do it as you can see in the right hand side it shows you the capacity you can create a disk of size maximum 16 terabytes that means I can just put in the number here and the disk will be allocated to you so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a very very small disk 10 GB in size this is in addition to my root volume uh, think of the C colon D colon E colon in Windows world or in Linux world you will have slash root and then uh, slash XDA or something for other disks so apart from my root volume apart from my C colon I'm going to create another disk which is uh, 10 GB in size now and you can see which availability zone you want to put it in automatically Amazon will take multiple copies of the same disk and keep it so it is fault tolerant that means that you are not exactly allocated only one disk it is more than one disk associated uh, to the same identifier and if one disk goes offline auto Amazon automatically ensures that your EBS is not going offline because there are multiple copies in the background so I'm going to choose uh, uh, if you're not familiar remember when in the first classes we spoke about regions and availability zones so this is the one of the data centers we are choosing now I'm choosing in Mumbai region you can see in the top I'm in Mumbai region there are two availability zones for me 1A and 1B and I'm choosing 1A for now and it is asking me whether I want to use a snapshot of an existing disk it gives me a lot of options I can search for uh, community provided uh, snapshots say for example there might be some guy who might have given WordPress you can just uh, search for it if it is available it will come if it is not available it's not going to come you, you can search for a lot of disks. there is a huge amount of especially if you know this identifier it makes it even more simple but we are not going to create an image from an existing snapshot to give an example here is Ubuntu trusty image so if I choose this option I will get a copy of the Ubuntu operating system so let us not do all that let us make it a plain a vanilla disk which is not formatted which will force us to format it and you can see here we already saw this option in S3 also we also have the same option in EBS as well so if you want to encrypt your disk all you have to do is just go ahead and click this and it is asking me what key I want to use whether the default key I want to use or is there any other key for now in my account if you remember, if you notice that from uh, previous days I have not created any key at all as of now so it is asking me whether I want to use my default key itself so let me go ahead and click on create it I mean cl click on encryption also so I have encrypted my disk as well now so click on create it takes a couple of minutes it depends upon the size of the disk uh, you can see here the disk will be getting created can you see this let me see if the screen is refreshed for you guys okay yeah you can see the yellow color icon that is it says that it is creating and then there is another one which is ex already existing one which says it is in use I already have a server running in my account and that server is using 30 GB of size and I have created one more disk which is of 10 GB in size which is getting created so if you want to know more properties about the disk you can click on that and come here and find the information what are you have selected see this is the identifier and this is the size and this is the performance that we, cho uh, we chose for our disk remember general purpose 2 we chose that is what it shows here and the amount of IOPS allocated for me and if there, is, if there is an encryption what is the availability zone and what is the key I am using for the encryption and it is also giving me an option of status checks let me check if it has been created see it is now changed it is already created and it is available for me to use there is a different color icon to notify that and it is available for use so and it is also here the volume status is okay because of the same reason it is available and there are no errors or no issues for that disk and if you go to monitoring uh, as of now the chart is all empty here because we are not doing any read write operations 
and uh, once we assign the disk and uh, we start doing some right activity we should be able to see some activity here and finally tagging i showed this in s3 also this is an user friendly identifier to understand what is this disk for so i'm going to say galaxy ebs demo disk so tomorrow when i come back or after 10 days i come back i will know why i created this disk what is the data that is stored in the disk by looking at this tag itself so i can take some action whether to keep the disk in my account or to remove it so for now we have created a disk now we need a server to access this disk to assign the disks and format it so for now for that i'm going to launch a server so I'm going to launch a Windows Server to begin with. Then we will see uh, about whether we have time to do a Linux. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm going to launch a Win Linux Server, not the Windows one. If we have time, we will do the other flavor also. So for launching a server in the same EC2 dashboard, I'm going to click on Instances and I'm going to choose all the default options here. I'm not going to choose anything customized here. Click on Launch Instance. Under Launch Instance, I'm going to say. Uh, Red Hat Linux because I am familiar with Red Hat Linux and see that I'm using the free tier option If you choose you can choose this checkbox here so that you can make sure that you are not going to pay extra money for doing this labs So choose that free tier checkbox. I may have made it put a check here then go ahead and click on Linux here And this is the general purpose and this is the free tier eligible you can see the green color uh, icon here notifier that says that I'm going to choose a server with one CPU and one GB of memory. That is a default option. If you notice, I, am, I did not check this by default. It is checked and I'm going to click on next here. This is at the bottom right hand corner, which says configure instance details. I'm going to click on this one and I'm here. I'm going to change a slide, uh, make a small change. It says auto assign public IP. I'm going to say enable by default is also use enable I'm going to ensure that it is going to be enabled this means I will get an IP address to connect to my server because we all want to experiment with the server so I'm going to connect it and click on next add storage by default uh, it is uh, giving me 10 GB of storage I'm just going to leave it as it is and click on I'm going to click on add a tag and I'm going to add a tag user friendly tag once again So you see here it automatically prompts me for my existing tag and prompts me to say that whether I want to use this tag. No, this is not a disk. This is a server. So I'm going to type something else here. And I, I would strongly recommend you guys to use tagging because whenever we are going to do, uh, do a cost analysis or when we are not sure what is in the storage or what is in the server, this tags will help you to easily understand. So when you're finished with it, click on next, configure security group. And um, I have, to, um, let us, uh, okay, but this is the default option. Let it uh, by, uh, be this as a default and by default, um, you should be having this on, I'm sorry. Click on create a new security group. Yeah, that is the default option and it is automatically created a launch wizard description, blah, blah, blah. And it is also saying uh, SSH is by default enabled and it is giving me, me a warning. If in case you're not able to see this SSH option, you need to click on add a rule and then choose SSH and then ensure port 22. And for Windows guys, you need to do RDP and automatically port 3389 will come. So for Linux people, 22 is mandatory. For Windows people, RDP is mandatory. So ensure that you allow those ports since we are going to do a Linux server now, just clip it as it is basics. Launch the server and don't worry if you're not followed anything here. Absolutely not an issue because once we learn how to launch a server, we can do that as well. So by default, what will happen here is it will ask you for a key. If it is a new account, you will not have a key here. So click on create a new key pair. And automatically Amazon will ask you to download the latest key pair. So I'm going to type, uh, this is not the one, Galaxy demo 
abs demo key so I type the name and click on download key pair and it will automatically download it and all you have to do is click on launch instances how many of you has used putty before I'm just waiting for the my server to launch. Ah. You can see here my server instance state is pending. I'm just waiting for it to launch. While it is getting launched, okay, it is ready now, it is in running state. If you click on that, you will get the public IP address here. This is my public IP. And, uh, and there is nothing else to know, uh, learn right now here. Let it be as it is. So I use a terminal called Mova Hextom. I would strongly recommend you guys to use this one for especially for logging into Linux machines. If you go to uh, this uh, URL, I'm just going to copy this and put it in the chat window. So all of you will have the URL. The reason this is it avoids some complexities that Putty introduces. Uh, it will have tabbed windows, colorful windows and all those blah, blah, blah nonsense. And there is a, if you go to download section, you should be able to download the, just click on go ahead at the top and click on uh, download the latest version, click on download and you, there's no installation here, which is completely works out of the box. You will get an exe file, you can use that. And that exe file will look like, let me try to do that. Just, I'm going to choose the portable option, choose the portable option, don't choose the, uh, installer edition choose the portable so you will get uh, oh my, I got it. it's going to take 10 minutes anyway the fact is it will give you an exe uh, let me see if I can show you guys how the folder looks like If you can see my screen now, uh, I'm just showing you my pre-existing downloaded copy. The reason I'm showing that is uh, you need to, uh, I don't want to use Putty because Putty introduces the co complexity of uh, changing the key format and all those nonsense. So when you download it and unzip it, you will get uh, uh, this kind of all that right, blah, blah, blah things. All you have to do is, uh, this is the exe that we are going to be interested on. Just double click this and open it. I should open it is processing okay you will get a terminal like this go ahead and click on session and choose SSH still not refreshing for you guys I'm downloading and then I'm doing uh, streaming for the training video so it's taking it's slower save everybody's time how much time is spending 10 seconds okay great let it finish let us do that as well so you can see here it is completed I'm just going to click on this to show you it is no magic here you can you see here <clears throat> you have an exe file and then the plugin all you have to do is double click on that it will work there is no additional configurations required or anything required on the background. So when you open it, you will get something like this window. And uh, in the top, you have the session, click on session, click on SSH. And for the IP address, we are going to 
go to our server copy this IP address and put it here and if you're using Linux especially Ubuntu Linux this is the user this is the default user for all the Red Hat Linux machines if it is Ubuntu okay great if it is Ubuntu the user ID will be UB Ubuntu it will be the user ID and if it is Windows the user ID will be administrator always so since we are using Linux we are going to like Red Hat Linux we are going to choose EC2 user and go to advanced and choose the security key remember we downloaded a key which is uh, in my downloads we should have a new key let me go ahead and find the key list not list details so that we can find the latest okay anybody remember the key name that we kept something galaxy demo yeah here we go you see here we have the key that is here galaxy ebs demo i'm just choosing that key only no magic here click on open so it is attached here and then click on open okay here so we should be connecting getting connected to our server it says i'm importing the key am i already connected to my server let me go to root because we are going to attach our ebs volumes so far all the steps that we have done is only for creating the server where you are going to attach our disks so sudo hyphen su will give me root access and root privileges it is as good as logging in as an administrator privileges so let us clear the screen and i'm going to show you how many disks are there currently and it shows that the, this is the disks that is uh, currently in my account so there is another command it should also show you uh, how many disks are there so you can see here there is only one disk which is of 10 GB if you remember when I launched this server it was having only I mean I launched it with a root disk of 10 GB in size so that is what is being shown here so another way to check it is, is the df-h option you can see here this is the main disk and it is having 10 GB and we don't have any other disks noted here so now we need to attach our storage to our, our server so let us go back to the console and go to our volumes you can see here very clearly it says there is one disk which is of 10 GB for a Galaxy demo disk and there is another 10 GB disk for my server also allocated and in my account I already have one more server running which is having a 30 GB disk allocated so what we want to do is we want to pick up this available disk and attach it to the server so go ahead click on this select it in other words and click on attach volume and if you go here it will allow me to select the type instance type or you can type in galaxy demo it should be able to pick up uh, oh god did we make a mistake my server is not in 1a my server is in 1b i guess it is in a different availability zone awesome we need to launch one more server now you can see here we my server is in availability zone 1b i just overlooked this option when i was choosing the ip address just going to I'm sorry guys for this crazy thing I'm just going to launch one more server which is going to be in availability zone 1b I'm sorry 1a not in 1b again instance details I'm going to edit my instance details and choose availability zone 1a here review and launch and I'm going to choose my Galaxy EBS demo key launch and launching a server is really really fast in Amazon uh, you can see here we are launching I've already launched my second server you can see here the one already existing is stopped the state and one we just created is in running state and the one we just launched just now is in pending I'm going to say it as you see one yeah 
I'm just editing the tag so it is easy for me to remember. So it is also in running state. I don't need the server. I'm just going to terminate this. If you don't want the server, all you have to do is go ahead, click on actions. Under actions, you will have instant state. Under instant state, you will have terminate. Click on terminate. It will automatically terminate here. Anyway, let us go ahead and connect to our 1B server. I just want to ensure that this is there. I just want to go ahead and connect to it as well and keep it ready before attaching the volume. See here, when I disconnected from the, when I terminated the server automatically, my session got disconnected here. It says the session stopped, please return to it, blah, blah, blah. So go ahead, click on, um, instead of that, this is the one advantage of using uh, this move bottom. I can do this right, I, I cannot do a lot of things like this in Putty. I can go ahead, edit it, change only my IP address. Uh, great, I copied something else. I'm going to just change my IP address. You see, I'm copying the IP address for my demo server, which is in 1A availability zone. The 13.126 is my IP address. I'm just going to put it here. My check my user ID. Check that the key is Galaxy demo key. Click on open, click on open. And it should work. If I want to rename it, I can do that as well. I can rename it to that as well. Okay, we have logged in and then we are in root. I'm going to just check what are the volumes that are available here. So here also we see that there is only 10 GB volume and there is only one volume available. Under that, there are two partitions that has been created under this volume. But apart from that, there is no other disks available. So let us go ahead and attach it in our console and see whether that is reflecting here. Click on volume. Interesting, right? That the second disk is disappeared. I mean, the tagging is not appear here. Okay, go ahead, attach volume. And if I click on that, now my second server should appear here. So we see here the server is appearing here, the tag and the server instance ID and the state that it is in. Click on that, attach it. And it says, uh, as what I want to attach it, leave it as default if you're leave it as default if you're not able to uh, if you don't want to change it just choose the instance ID and uh, choose the device name that you want to use and then click on attach and if you go here you can see here the status of the disk has been changed to I am selected the disk and you see here the status of the disk has been changed to in use now. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put it under monitoring see when, and see whether any read rate is happening. Let us go back to our server and uh, do a DA5K or LS block. We should be able to see another empty disk here. As you can see here, there is a new disk that is appeared in our storage and in our server and it is of size 10 GB now. So I need to format it and for, uh, for after formatting it, I need to mount it. So for, for formatting, this is the command. I put it in the chat window also. This is this command works in Linux. Make file system. That is what the command is. Make file system. And I'm choosing the format. That is T hyphen T is the format. And I'm going to choose the format as ext4. Uh, you can choose NTFS, FAT32. Lot of combinations are there. But the latest modern file systems Yes, Mr. Hanu, we have to create the server and the storage have to be in the same region. You can replicate it to another region. You can take a snapshot to another region and move it across regions. You cannot mount, crisscross mount, you cannot do that. Uh, you say, for example, you create a disk in uh, India and try to mount it to a server in US, that is not going to work. As we saw, even in India also, we need to have it in the same availability zone. So, let me finish this command. So I'm just going to put this here. So the command is nothing but make file system. I'm choosing the format and I'm saying on which disk I want to create it. So this is the disk name and I'm just prefixing it saying it's a device and press enter. 
Oh, um, make a first doesn't work. One second, did I make a error? One second. Must be create a first if that is the case. So I'm just going to try MK first instead of make a first. Are you able to see my screen? T ext4 okay that's working as you can see here it has created a file system on and it is ready for me to use if i put the ls block again ls block you can you cannot say anything because we have not created a, a mount pa, mount partition and then mounted it let me just create a directory where i want to mount it let us say temp uh, on slash where ebs demo okay we have created it and then i'm going to mount it now and just a moment Where is my disk? I'm just trying to find out where is my disk here. Guys, I, are you able to see it now? I mean, if you're not seen it or heard it, what, what I've done is I've just created a mount point where I want to mount my file system. And then I create, use the command that is, what is the disk I want to mount and what is the destination I want to mount it. So the command is mount, the device name, and then the destination. These are all Linux commands. You need, I would expect you to Google a little bit uh, of Linux if you're not familiar or else use the same syntax that I'm using here. And then I, when I do a DF-H, you can see here, uh, are, are everybody able to hear me? So another reminder for everybody. So in case um, uh, you didn't follow it, the last part, we went uh, went to the server, we resized it, and then we came and checked uh, using uh, ls block command, and we saw that the storage is uh, reflecting the block command is reflecting 15 GB, and my mount point is not reflecting it. If you do a df-h, uh, it is still reflecting as 9.8 GB only. So then you issue a command something like resize to fs. This works in Linux, Red Hat Linux. The resize to fs and then the disk name that is the device name this is my device name so slash do slash xvdf and then it gives the default output saying that the disk has been now resized to this many blocks confirm it by using df-h and now you can see that there is a 15 gb of storage available for you to reuse so summarize create it format it i mean create it attach it first and then come to the server format it mount it then we looked at how to extend the volumes also and if you notice there is one interesting thing I, I did not talk about my disk is encrypted at the console i did not do anything in my server to ensure that uh, to read and write to the disk even though if it is encrypted that is because amazon ensures that when the server is talking to the storage the data is written to it in an encrypted format and whenever you are trying to retrieve it it will be automatically unencrypted so there is absolutely no additional activities when you are using amazon keys that is amazon kms keys for encrypting or decrypting your disk it is uh, as simple as checking a box in the console and once you check that box in the console automatically all the data stored in the disk is encrypted to confirm that i'm just going to the console now i'm just going to show you where it says as it is encrypted remember i have selected my disk here and you see here it is encrypted whereas uh, let me check the disk that is attached to my server itself that is my root volume i'm selecting this one this this 10 gb disk is attached to my root volume of the server and when it comes to encryption it says not encrypted so in the same server, I have both encrypted volumes and unencrypted volumes. And at the server level, I'm not using any 
uh, additional activities i don't need to perform any additional activities to ensure the encryption happens if you want to use your own keys then you need to do additional activities but if you're using amazon provided keys it is straightforward as checking a box in the console so that is all it is for amazon encryption data encryption in ebs volumes using amazon's own keys so as you can see here i selected my disk again encryption is encrypted and you have the key id that is shown here and this is the amazon's uh, key id that it is a reference number for my key to know that what key i'm using to record uh, what key i'm using to encrypt the data so that's all there it is i will upload this and give you the link